Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Today we will be covering the CitizenCon panel talking specifically about the Gen 12 renderer and the Vulkan API. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you guys so much for the support. And if you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. So before we get to this, the panel went deep into how the current renderer, the Gen 12 renderer and the Vulkan API work, breaking down its architecture. Now, personally, I was lost as it was way over my head. But if you are someone who understands, appreciates or even wants to try and understand its architecture, then I have, of course, linked the original video in the description below. Unfortunately, my brain was just not capable. So with that said, this is not a technical breakdown of what the Gen 12 renderer and Vulkan API is. It is more of a what will it do, where they are with its development and implementation and what to expect in the future. So kicking off with the Gen 12 renderer, the job of the renderer is to feed out the image at the end of the frame. And using the Gen 12 renderer, this makes things much easier to optimize. It is more flexible and more modular. Also, the process it takes is far more simple and streamlined compared to the previous renderer. Now, the benefit of using Gen 12 is that the code is much simpler and easier to multi-thread, running it on multiple CPU cores in parallel, which is crucial for modern CPUs. So basically, it distributes the workload. So after the high-level breakdown of the Gen 12 renderer, they spoke more about Vulkan, which is a modern graphics API that will allow developers greater control over what we see as the player while greatly affecting performance. Now, Vulkan will allow the developers to eliminate the bottlenecks that are currently happening on the CPU by submitting work in parallel, and it provides flexibility for cross-platform, including Windows and Linux. Vulkan is a tool that can be used for development and can interface between our GPU as a player and them as developers that will allow them to give us the latest and greatest. Vulkan also has many features and extensions available that they will be exploring in the future, like variable rate shading, bindless resources and GPU accelerated ray tracing, which we will speak about in a minute. To be able to address any issue, CIG will be capturing data from our hardware to target specific features and extensions. And as yet, there is no large scale multiplayer games that capture Vulkan data live in the way that CIG will. Capturing this data will allow CIG to plan ahead for any optimizations, leveraging that for the large majority of players. And this pie graph here that was captured, I think in the last three months, they said, shows just how many players would actually benefit from the use of Vulkan. And 98% of the players will be able to use the latest Vulkan 1.2 fully. And they are looking into why the 1% are happening. And he says, please update your drivers as this can take you straight to the latest version. So over time, there has been a few versions of Vulkan. I think 1.2 is the latest and each one gives the developers a few more options. There are two benefits right now that CIG will be looking into and developing for. These are bindless resources and fragment shading rate. Now, fragment shading rate can be seen as the same as variable rate shading, which works on groups of pixels instead of a singular pixel at a time within the shader. This allows for far less overhead in the frame, while simultaneously allowing variable amounts of these groups in order to have less fidelity where it is not important to look at. So I guess making each scene more efficient, maybe. Bindless resourcing is where they can take a group of textures, for example, and reach in and grab one of these inside the group. This gets rid of the overheads of specifically binding two slots within the shader and also extends to other resources, including buffers. Next, he spoke about VRAM, and VRAM used to be managed by the graphics driver, but with Vulkan, it can now be managed by the developers directly. And as CIG know what resources are used up front and how much memory these resources use, they will be using their own implementation. So it sounds like it'll allow for more freedom for CIG to choose where the VRAM is allocated, which is obviously great as there will be far less wasted. And using this, they say, could potentially beat what the graphics drivers used to be capable of, overall leaving CIG with all of the allocation, freeing usage and reusage of resources. So what does this mean for us now? So going forwards, using advanced graphics options, we will be able to tweak the memory assigned to each system to allow us to balance the preferred visuals and performance for our experience, like what we see in pretty much every other PC game. For example, reducing shadow quality to maybe play at a higher resolution. 
These will be available to us and based entirely on what hardware we have and what we prioritize. So to summarize, with the Gen 12 renderer, they are hoping to achieve something that is more efficient, modular, flexible, has minimum abstraction to hardware and uses modern graphics APIs like Vulkan. So the big question is, where are they with all of its implementation? Right now, the architecture is all in place and they are currently using a hybrid approach where they are combining elements of the old and new at the same time. All of the post effects, fog and lighting have been converted over and they are all enabled by default in Alpha 315. The fundamentals of scene and geometry rendering are all in place, but they are still being worked on. So the main focus is finishing off that first. And then once done, the focus will shift to the remaining major systems that are gas clouds, the render to texture system, and a few other cases for transparency. Now, once that is done, that is when they will reach the public milestone number one, which is 100% usage of Gen 12 while still using the DX11 API. Milestone two is Gen 12 again, but this time using the Vulkan API, which will be optional at first and eventually mandatory once all of the bugs are removed. And the final milestone, Milestone 3, will be when they have performed the optimizations to be multi-threaded, which will only happen once Vulkan is in place, and they can finally look at the performance on the final API and optimize all the remaining code. So what is after Gen 12 and Vulkan? What does the future look like for the graphics team? A lot of Gen 12 has been focused on CPU performance, so next they want to look at GPU performance. Firstly, it will be ways to improve the visuals rather than improving the frame rate. So things like DLSS and FSR upscaling, async compute and variable rate shading. After they have improved the GPU performance, they will then look at some of the more exciting visual features like mesh shaders and primitive shaders that can be used to generate procedural geometry, which will be exciting for planets and asteroid fields, but then ray tracing. And they are very exciting to get to ray tracing specifically for lighting such as global illumination, reflections, and shadow quality. So that is the breakdown of the need to know information of the Gen 12 renderer and Vulkan. It is great hearing that they are well underway and currently rolling it out to the PU, which I think actually begun back in Alpha 314 and just will continue until it's done. Hopefully we will be seeing and feeling the improvements with every patch from here out, but I guess that really depends on how quickly things are completed. Of course, no one really has any idea how long it's all going to take, but over the course of development, we will see these benefits come in and many will improve our performance and visuals all the way to ray tracing, which I just really cannot wait to see in a game like Star Citizen. Having a natural and realistic lighting system that will take the actual light from the system's star and other light sources, of course, I think will just make such a major difference in Star Citizen. But with it being the last feature on the list, we are not talking anytime soon for ray tracing, but I am more than happy to just see the benefits that Gen 12 and Vulkan will have in the near term, and hopefully soon we can see more choice in what graphical settings we prefer and a bigger improvement to performance overall. Anyway, a big thank you to the teams working on this. They are doing an incredible job. It was a great panel, especially if you want the real deep details about its architecture. But with that said, I will certainly be covering all of the rest of the panels of CitizenCon. This is just the first one. So be sure to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on them. Also, we will be taking a look at the panels of CitizenCon over on Twitch and discussing everything we saw. So do follow the link in the description below to twitch.tv forward slash Ryan if you want to hang out with us all. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, does the channel a big favor and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, huge thank you to my patrons and channel members for all of your support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.